Here's something you might not be aware of. As of today, about 80% of blockchain transactions are currently being tracked by surveillance software. And that's one thing you don't hear too often about this whole adoption and mass expansion of the blockchain industry. So today I want to share a couple of thoughts with you and uh, definitely, definitely dive a little bit deeper and share some of my findings with you and as well as get your thoughts. So today, back at you, I uh, wanted to share some more confessions of a Bitcoin skeptic. And so once again, the goal is not to hate, but more so to educate, because I believe that there's a whole nother side of the whole blockchain mass adoption movement that's underway that's not really being covered. And so just this past weekend, uh, actually two days ago, came across some information that got me uh, wondering and did a little bit of diving or whatever, because it doesn't take much to just begin asking the right questions and then go find some answers. But also, I want to follow up to a previous video I did about the whole aspect of the server going down. So I actually had a chance to ask directly to uh, some of the founders of a uh, app service that um, stores crypto and does all the typical blockchain transactions. Um, we got a, a question here that we probably should should answer. So, what happens if the servers go down? What happens to the app? This is a, well, this a great is, question from this is the most rethinking part. the dollar. And actually, this is one of the big biggest differences between <laughs> Edge and what you had mentioned with blockchain, blockchain info. Yeah, this is actually exactly. the most beautiful part of our architecture. Yeah. So one of the things that causes us like a lot of engineering headache because it's actually hard to do. It's very hard to do. But we, to we do. actually did something pretty awesome here. Cool. If our yeah. servers go down nothing happens um if you guys are interested i'll definitely link that uh, beneath this video here so you guys can hear their response to my question about the servers going down but for this video here blockchain forensics prior to basically being introduced to it about 48 72 hours ago wasn't really familiar with it so i figure i would imagine most people may not be familiar with it either because outside of the adoption push you don't really get a chance to hear about the other side of things uh, and in regards to the whole open ledger, the trust side of things and the fact that cryptocurrency is promoted as being a trustless system. And so here I actually put together a little visual aid here. And so this is gave, gives you a basic idea as to how the whole uh, blockchain forensics works. So basically it's a software surveillance service that's being offered by a particular company that I'm going to be talking about today. But then come to find out there's all types of current companies out there that simply trace and track according to they, their KYT protocol that they set up, which is basically know your transactions. And so it, it's a one big circle of um, things that I think people should be aware of because it's one of the things where we're not really told uh, the, the, the back end of things, how it actually works or whatnot. And so a part of the whole cryptocurrency mass adoption movement is to basically free the people from the banking sector. But when I hear stories like this and I see software that's set up to kind of keep people in check still, it's all being um, mentioned in regards to powers that be being able to control illicit behavior as it's referred to commonly in a lot of articles I, I read. And then on another note, it's all about giving a sense of privacy or the ability to have trustless transactions amongst peer to peer or however uh, it goes down. But ultimately, the goal at the end of the day is to not to provide anonymity out of the eyes and out of the hands of the government and all the governmental services, especially the IRS. And so came across a video about over the last week, there's been something that hasn't gotten much mainstream coverage, but it's all in the crypto world. So over the last week or two, to my knowledge, there has been a report of a child abuse website based out of South Korea that was brought down after two or so years of investigative type work using Bitcoin or blockchain forensics. And for those that are not aware of blockchain forensic, I think it's something that you might want to pay attention to a little bit more. And so it's one of the things where I'll just scan the surface, give you a little bit of my couple couple day uh, look into it. But it goes a lot deeper because this little visual aid here, I'm going to keep elaborating on this because in the center here we have... Uh, some three gentlemen who founded a company by the name of Chain Analysis. And so once you if you Google Chain Analysis, you'll get some of the on the surface type of things. Even if you YouTube Chain Analysis, you know, you'll get a couple of crypto people who have mentioned them, uh, the company and the service. But a lot of them have not gone viral, which means a lot of people still don't know about it. So most of the people only know the front surface, which is what's going on in the adoption and the whole idea of 
cryptocurrency shooting to the moon and all the all the good things, not realizing that along with all that on the back end, governments have to make sure that they are not allowing people to get away from them completely. And so you have companies like this chain analysis. Uh, so in the middle of the video, in the middle of this graph here, I have three gentlemen here. We have Michael to the left. We got Jan in the middle. We got Jonathan. So these are three gentlemen that formed the company chain analysis. So give an idea from what I've gathered. 2014, December 2014, chain analysis was formed somewhere in the, in the European area. And so since then, they've become more of a public uh, co corporation based out of New York. And so this is just one company here that I think is worth mentioning, just because they have led the charge in breaking up a, a basically a two year investigative type of process where approximately 300 or so individuals were brought to justice for participating in a child abuse site with using Bitcoin. And so basically, if you read some stories, I encourage you to take time and find out more for yourself. But in a nutshell, there is some software that has been able to track, trace and to basically take back to the origin of the original purchase to where they can find out based upon your wallet address. And so it's very interesting how they are able to backtrack, monitor, and it goes it goes much deeper than that. But in, in a sense, because of the software protocol they have, it's improving. And this is basically just, you know, software 1.0. And I know that the current uh, Bitcoin is right now is on its beginning phase. It's in the beginning phase. So, of course, it'll improve and all that stuff like that. But some of the things I wanted to bring out was the fact that here we have a software program that has been designed to track and trace in real time. So there's a lot of benefits and features that they are touting. But yet it's approved and backed and encouraged by governments, corporations, all the exchanges. They are there more so forced to use software like this to be compliant to government regulations and whatnot. So here in the U.S., we have the, the, the big boys. We got Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, and all the other ones out there. And it's good to say all of those corporations use software from service providers such as Chain Analysis because it makes their job easier. And so ultimately what it does, it, it, uh, it starts the moment you KYC, the moment you go to the AML process and sign it up at one of the uh, authentic registered exchanges, you are then in the in the system. And so the, one of the biggest problems with this is most people don't talk about the tracking and tracing aspect of things. So there's all types of ways that people try to mix and, and um, they got uh, Wasabi Wallet and CoinJoin. So different ways of trying to you know, mix your, your mix your wallet addresses up and whatnot. But the average person, the average person out there have no clue about how to do all that. And so they just take it as they go to exchange, they purchase crypto and it sits in their wallet. They are good. All along, you have software out there that is designed to basically make sure that there is no quote unquote illicit behavior. And the question will then be at this current moment, illicit behavior classifies as this most recent case of a child abuse site that was taken down. And so it was a joint effort amongst, I want to say, 11 different governments, as well as all types of uh, 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 police authorities or whatnot, to bring down 300 or so individuals that were using Bitcoin for the site. And so if you watch a couple of the, the, the videos out there and the interviews, you'll get a chance to hear about how they actually did all that. But it's basically pattern recognition, basically being able to say, OK, based upon IP address, based upon the person's behavior as, as, as far as them using their address. And even if they try to mix a couple addresses, the software appears to be very smart thus far to where they can still track and, and, and basically pinpoint the original purchase of a coin of some type and then be able to trace it. And then once they're able to trace it back to the to the to the exchange, it was purchased that your KYC information will definitely give it away. So I'm kind of all over the place, but I initially had some thoughts, you know, nice and planned or whatever, but got away from that. But so in diving a little bit deeper, chain analysis, blockchain forensics, it's one of the things where it's touted as being something that's good for the people because it keeps criminals from ha having their way out in the dark web and things like that. But think about this. If there's technology out there that can track and trace illicit behavior, behavior or activity that the government says not the government says is not legal what happens as things go along and we get into more of a crypto friendly environment where more people are taking advantage of cryptocurrency and of course some of the government bodies and so on this little visual aid here and then when it comes to the government every single agency has access to this software so this software sits on 
uh, the, 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 as I mentioned, exchanges, governments, banks, and you name them, they all have access to the software provided by the three gentlemen in the middle here. And so what that does is basically IRS, FBI, CIA, you name all those bodies, they can then get real-time data on where wallets do what they do. And then, of course, all the wallets in their software is backlinked to a KYC account to where it's not hard to get people's information. So one of the things that concerns me most out of all this is the fact that right now the software is up and running, it's available, and it's just been a beginning, beginning phase. When time moves on and cryptocurrency reaches that mass adoption phase, what will keep the governing bodies from passing laws or saying that it's illegal to not report some of the most minor, I don't know what, just you know, just way out there off the, off the cuff type of things. But this technology has the potential to be used for good in regards to arresting people who are out there actually doing criminal activity. But then again, being reversed and flipped on those that are just your average tax paying citizen that has no clue that they are now a part of an industry that is not much different than the old industry. Because unless you're going through all those extracurricular ways of hiding and trying to use different mixers and all types of things like that, if you're just person just got a wallet and you got you going in and out of it everything you're doing is being watched. And so to dive a little deeper, um, stable coins, one of the things that caught me by surprise is that every single stable coin, every single entity that offers a stable coin, they have to be compliant with some type of software of this nature because chain analysis on their website or whatnot, I forgot, I forgot where I read it or watched it, but they are they track every single stable coin. So every single stable coin has within its ability or whatever it is to be tracked and traced and monitored. So they know where every coin is going. So I'm thinking as of now, stable coins are being offered as a way of earning interest as well as a couple other cryptos. So we got Coinbase, we got, I don't know, a lot of companies, I, you know, I'm over, all over the place right now, but they're offering you the chance to hold your crypto and they'll pay you interest. And so once again, if all stable coins are being tracked and traced or able to be tracked and traced, there's no way of getting out of that mix of trying to not have to report or whatnot. If there's people out there who don't report or whatever because you move funds all the time, your coins are going to be traced. So it won't be hard not to trace you. And then on top of that, when it comes to chain analysis, which is one of many, uh, off the top of my head, they have nine of the top major cryptocurrencies that they do track right now. So you got your Litecoins, Bitcoins, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum. Uh, Dash when it's not when the privacy feature is not on Dash, and then you have ERC twenty tokens, which are the big things they're going after. So there's about thirty or so forty coins that they are actually real time data tracking through their software. So whenever a coin moves somewhere somehow, they're able to see where it's going and, and all that type of activity there. And so according to this little visual aid I put up here, there's about there's the, there's the vendors there's vendors there's the exchanges there's the uh, governments and then there's your wallet and then there's chain analysis in the middle of all that so one that one big web there is the same system it's similar to the same system we're in now to where cryptocurrency is being offered as a way out of a system but at the same time that people are excited about the technology and the opportunity of cryptocurrencies freeing them from god knows what they're setting up a system to where you're still going to be monitored tracked and traced in a similar fashion as now, but it's going to be even more di difficult to to really begin to uh, free yourself because it's solely a digital system. And so with that being the case, about to get ready to wrap it up, but I thought I would just bring this whole idea of blockchain forensics. I would encourage everybody to take time to find out more for yourself. I just wanted to skim the surface, but these are all things that causes me to be very skeptical now. Uh, knowing that there's coins out there that's being tracked and traced, there's technologies just being set up deliberately to make sure that um, they kind of have an oversight as to what and who does what. And then one of the things where how how, how freeing is the cryptocurrency sector in a sense outside of the privacy coins? Because from articles I've read, the privacy aspect is we got the privacy coins that are not as readily and are able to be tracked and traced. And, and from some things I've heard, it looks like they might be having problems with that, but it's just a matter of time, probably before they're able to do something that way. But once again, blockchain forensics, software surveillance system that's that's in this foundational phase, just like uh, the cryptocurrency is well in its infancy phase right now. It's only 10 years old. It's nowhere near where it's going to be five, 10 years from now. But then think about 
chain analysis as a company and cyber trace and all those other companies out there that are getting government funding pretty soon the government will probably end up getting involved taking over some of these companies or helping advance that software to the point where they're going to have a lot more control than people are even aware of and that's where i wanted to shine some light on this not to hate on the cryptocurrency sector but more importantly to educate people because most people don't even know about blockchain forensics and its infancy phase as well but then here's something worth thinking about and i'll leave you with this and as always leave a comment down below I love to have a little dialogue back and forth. It's all in good spirits of trying to help people understand what's going on out there. Um, so here's a question to think about. What will happen when this surveillance software for, for, for the blockchain sake is combined with quantum computing? And so when you have computer power that's capable of doing some very disruptive things on one end, join with some software that's designed and set up to track trace monitor and pinpoint exact location all those type of things what happens when you merge those two together does that spell freedom does that spell uh, what everybody is being told that cryptocurrency will possibly bring them one day i question it i wonder and so it's one of the things where i thought i would just put it out there and, and get a chance to see what you guys think and then as always, what else? That's pretty much all that comes to my mind. I, I had more things to mention, but I'm sure I'll come it'll come back and I'll get a video out to you guys. But if you guys enjoy this back and forth, if you guys enjoy hearing about the other side of something that's labeled as being good, leave a comment down below. Get this video a thumbs up and share this video with those that are in the crypto space so that they, they can they themselves can educate themselves even more. And then on top of that, let's get some dialogue back and forth. Let's talk about stuff like this because... You know, don't really concern yourself with cryptos going to the moon because they are going to go to the moon because we have an old monetary system that's dying. But when cryptos go to the moon, do you also know that there's some software out there? There's corporations being set up right now to track every single thing anyway. So there's no real getting away from uh, what you might think you're getting away from because they will know <laughs> what you are holding. So um, just my two cents there, but I'm curious to find out what you think. Just give this video a thumbs up, share it, and I look forward to reading some of the comments. Peace.